Hi my friends and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. Geohazard mitigation products and slope protection measures are crucial components of infrastructure development and safety in areas prone to natural hazards such as landslides, rockfalls, and soil erosion. These products and measures are designed to mitigate the risks associated with geotechnical instability and provide long-term stability to slopes and embankments. Geohazard mitigation products encompass a range of geosynthetic materials and systems that are specifically engineered to reinforce and stabilize slopes. They include high tensile steel wire mesh, geotextiles, geogrids, and erosion control blankets. These materials are selected based on their strength, durability, and compatibility with the site conditions. Slope protection measures involve the implementation of engineering techniques and systems to prevent slope failure and erosion. This can include the installation of retaining walls, slope stabilization anchors, rockfall barriers, and slope drainage systems. These measures are designed to enhance slope stability, reduce the risk of landslides, and protect infrastructure and human lives. The manufacturing process of geohazard mitigation products involves the selection of high-quality raw materials, such as high tensile steel wire, and the utilization of advanced manufacturing techniques. Rigorous testing is conducted to ensure the products meet international standards for strength, durability, and performance. Bridges, marvels of engineering, symbolize humanity's ability to overcome geographical barriers and connect communities. Among these feats stands the construction of the world's longest spanning thrust arch bridge, an exemplar of engineering excellence. This part delves into the intricate process of constructing such a bridge while exploring the remarkable advancements in concrete-filled steel tubular CFST, arch bridges, revolutionizing the landscape of bridge engineering. The world's longest spanning thrust arch bridge. The construction of the world's longest spanning thrust arch bridge, the Zigui Yangtze River Bridge in Hubei Province, China, is a remarkable engineering feat that required innovative techniques and careful planning. With a span of 531.2 meters and a length of 883.2 meters, this bridge stands as a testament to human ingenuity in overcoming challenging geological conditions and pushing the boundaries of bridge engineering. Situated in Zigui County, Yichang City, Hubei Province, Central China, the Zigui Yangtze River Bridge is a critical infrastructure project connecting two sections over the Bingshu Baojian Valley. Its location atop the cliffs of the Xiling Gorge presented significant challenges to construction due to the geologically fragile nature of the surrounding mountains, predominantly composed of limestone and riddled with karst caves. The bridge's design, as a steel box truss thrust arch bridge, sets it apart as a structural marvel. It boasts the world's longest span in its category and holds the distinction of having the highest clearance height in Asia. The construction of such a colossal structure commenced in August 2015, with completion achieved in phases. The final T-shaped section of the South Approach Bridge, marking the completion of the world's largest span steel box truss thrust arch, was installed on July 20. The construction process of the Zigui Yangtze River Bridge involved meticulous planning and execution. Various structural forms were considered, including deck arch bridges, half through true arch bridges, through deck stiffened arch bridges, through rigid frame tied arch bridges, and fly bird type arch bridges. Ultimately, the thrust arch design was chosen for its suitability to span the vast distance and withstand the geological challenges of the region.
Concrete-filled steel tubular, CFST, arch bridges represent a significant advancement in bridge engineering, offering enhanced strength, durability, and versatility compared to traditional bridge designs. These bridges employ steel tubes filled with concrete to create robust arch structures capable of spanning vast distances while maintaining structural integrity. In next part, we delve into the various structural forms and construction methods of CFST arch bridges, showcasing their evolution and innovation in modern bridge engineering. Structural forms of CFST arch bridges. Deck arch bridge. In a deck arch bridge, the arch ribs can be composed of several vertical dumbbell-shaped CFST ribs or truss CFST ribs connected by lateral bracings of steel tubes. This structural form is suitable for medium to large spans, offering a high crossing capacity. Notable examples include the Fengji Meishihei Bridge and the Zhujing Bridge, which demonstrate the effectiveness of this design in spanning considerable distances. Half Through True Arch Bridge The Half Through True Arch Bridge features a large span with reduced rise relative to road elevation, minimizing the height of spandrel columns. This structural form is ideal for accommodating large spans while maintaining optimal clearance height. The Wushan Yangtze River Bridge holds the span record in this category, showcasing the capabilities of half through true arch bridges. Through Deck Stiffened Arch Bridge CFST through deck stiffened arch bridges comprise CFST arch ribs and PC or steel tied girders, providing excellent mid span bridge solutions. These bridges feature a deck structure supported by CFST arch ribs, enhancing structural integrity and load bearing capacity. Examples include the Moon Island Bridge and the Second Yellow River Highway Bridge, which highlight the effectiveness of this design in supporting heavy traffic loads. Through Rigid Frame Tied Arch Bridge Through Rigid Frame Tied Arch Bridges feature arch ribs fixed to piers, forming a rigid frame structure. High strength strands are employed as tied bars, pre-stressed to produce horizontal compression forces to balance the thrust of the arch ribs. Notable examples include the Number 3 Hanjiang Bridge, which demonstrates the stability and structural integrity of through rigid frame tied arch bridges. Fly Bird Type Arch Bridge. The Fly Bird Type Arch Bridge comprises three spans, including a central half through CFST arch and cantilevered half arches. This structural form offers expansive spanning capacity and structural stability. Examples such as the Mao Chao Ji Bridge and the Yajisha Bridge showcase the versatility and effectiveness of Fly Bird Type Arch Bridges in spanning vast distances. Construction methods of CFST arch bridges. Cantilever launching method. The cantilever launching method is widely used in CFST arch bridge construction, relying on main and auxiliary cables controlled by jacks for stability. This method facilitates precise alignment and positioning of arch segments, ensuring structural integrity throughout construction. Notable examples include the Wushan Yangtze River Bridge where the cantilever launching method was employed to span the expansive river gorge. Swing methods. Swing methods, including vertical and horizontal swing techniques, are employed to facilitate the precise positioning of arch segments. Vertical swing methods involve fabricating semi-arch ribs in a low position and hoisting them into place, 
while horizontal swing methods utilize balance weight systems for rotation. Examples such as the Ya Ji Sha Bridge and the Wang Bai He Bridge demonstrate the effectiveness of swing methods in constructing CFST arch bridges. Innovative approaches. Innovative approaches, such as combining vertical and horizontal swing methods, have emerged to enhance construction efficiency and precision. These methods utilize advanced techniques to minimize disruptions to surrounding areas and optimize construction timelines. Examples include the Wenfeng Lu Bridge, which showcases the integration of vertical and horizontal swing methods for seamless construction. Scaffoldings. Scaffoldings are utilized for through tied arch bridges with shorter spans, providing support and stability during construction. This method demonstrates the adaptability of construction techniques employed in CFST arch bridges, catering to a wide range of structural requirements. Notable examples include various bridges where scaffoldings were employed to facilitate construction in challenging terrain. Steel rebar work is a critical aspect of constructing foundations and bridge decks, playing a pivotal role in ensuring the structural integrity, stability, and longevity of these essential infrastructures. From skyscrapers to highway overpasses, steel rebar is indispensable in providing strength and reinforcement to concrete structures, with its significance deeply rooted in engineering principles and construction practices. In the construction of foundations, steel rebar serves as the backbone of the structure, providing support and strength to withstand the immense loads imposed by buildings, bridges, and other heavy structures. By embedding steel reinforcement within concrete, engineers can effectively counteract the tensile forces that concrete alone cannot withstand. This combination of materials creates a composite structure capable of withstanding various environmental factors, including seismic activity soil settlement, and dynamic loads. Bridge decks, in particular, require robust reinforcement to support the constant traffic loads and environmental stresses they endure. Steel rebar is strategically placed within the concrete deck to enhance its load-bearing capacity, prevent cracking, and resist corrosion caused by exposure to harsh weather conditions and de-icing agents. Additionally, the flexibility of steel rebar allows engineers to design bridge decks with longer spans, reducing the need for additional support structures and optimizing the overall efficiency of the bridge design. Beyond structural reinforcement, steel rebar work facilitates the construction process by providing formwork support and ensuring dimensional accuracy during concrete placement. By properly positioning and securing rebar within the formwork, construction teams can create a framework for pouring concrete that conforms to the desired shape and specifications. This precision is essential for achieving uniformity and consistency in the finished structure minimizing the risk of defects and ensuring compliance with regulatory standards. Moreover, steel rebar offers versatility in design, allowing engineers to tailor reinforcement layouts to meet specific project requirements and performance criteria. Through advanced modeling techniques and computer-aided design software, engineers can optimize the distribution of rebar within a structure, maximizing its strength and durability while minimizing material usage and construction costs. This level of customization ensures that foundations and bridge decks are engineered to withstand anticipated loads and environmental conditions throughout their service life.
In addition to its role in new construction, steel rebar work is also integral to the rehabilitation and retrofitting of existing structures. Aging bridges and foundations often require strengthening and repair to address deterioration, increase load capacity, and extend their operational lifespan. By strategically adding steel reinforcement to targeted areas or implementing innovative retrofitting techniques, engineers can enhance the performance and resilience of these critical infrastructure assets, safeguarding public safety and preserving valuable transportation networks. The construction process of the two-way Cow Lane Bridge was marked by a series of challenges and delays but ultimately resulted in a significant infrastructure upgrade for the area. The project commenced swiftly, with the demolition of the old bridge and the construction of the new one occurring in a matter of days, demonstrating the efficiency and dedication of the construction teams involved. Throughout the construction process, which began in 2012, various hurdles emerged that tested the project's timeline and resources. Despite teams working tirelessly, including through the holiday season, unexpected complications arose. One such challenge was the discovery of a tangle of cables beneath the road surface, leading to additional delays as contractors navigated this unexpected obstacle. Another significant setback came in the form of a dispute over land ownership, which persisted for nearly two years, stalling progress and causing frustration for both the authorities and the construction teams. This dispute, coupled with the refusal of a nearby landowner to sell required property, resulted in a substantial delay in the project timeline, prompting Network Rail to withdraw its staff from the site at one point. Furthermore, the construction process was hindered by the emergence of a sinkhole, adding yet another layer of complexity to an already challenging endeavor. However, despite these setbacks, the perseverance of the project teams ultimately prevailed, and the road was reopened in both directions, marking a significant improvement in traffic flow for the area. Engineering marvels. The construction techniques behind the Izmet Bay suspension bridge bridges stand as iconic symbols of human ingenuity, connecting distant shores and spanning vast expanses with grace and strength. Among these architectural marvels, the Izmet Bay suspension bridge emerges as a testament to cutting-edge engineering and innovative construction techniques. In this article, we delve into the intricate process of building this monumental structure, exploring the methods, materials, and challenges that define modern bridge construction. The Foundation, Submerged Caissons At the heart of the Izmet Bay Suspension Bridge lies its foundation, a network of submerged caissons anchoring the towering piers to the seabed below. This foundational element is critical to the stability and integrity of the entire structure, requiring meticulous planning and precision execution. Submerged caissons, also known as underwater boxes or cofferdams, are hollow concrete or steel structures designed to be submerged underwater and filled with compressed air to create a dry working environment. These caissons serve as temporary support structures during the construction phase, allowing engineers and workers to excavate the seabed, pour concrete, and anchor the bridge piers securely.
The construction of submerged caissons involves a multi-step process, beginning with the installation of steel sheet piles to create a perimeter around the construction area. Once the perimeter is established, water is pumped out from within the enclosure, creating a dry workspace for construction activities to commence. Workers then excavate the seabed to reach the desired depth, pouring concrete to form the foundation of the bridge piers. Towering Heights, Pier Construction Rising from the depths of the sea, the towering piers of the Izmet Bay Suspension Bridge command attention and admiration. These monumental structures serve as the primary support for the bridge deck, bearing the weight of the suspended roadway and distributing forces to the underlying foundation. The construction of bridge piers requires precision engineering and advanced construction techniques to ensure structural stability and longevity. In the case of the Izmet Bay Suspension Bridge, the piers are constructed using reinforced concrete, with steel reinforcement bars providing additional strength and durability. Once the foundation is in place, formwork is erected around the pier location to contain the concrete during pouring. Concrete is then poured into the formwork, layer by layer, gradually building up the pier to its full height. As the concrete cures and hardens, the formwork is removed, revealing the solid structure beneath. The motorway's journey commences in Gebs, an industrial town on the outskirts of Istanbul. This initial section, spanning 53 kilometers, serves as the gateway to the project. The highlight of this phase is undoubtedly the construction of the iconic Izmet Bay Suspension Bridge, a marvel of modern engineering. With a main span of 1,580 meters, this bridge spans the heavily congested Izmet Bay, providing a vital link between the northern and southern coasts. In addition to the bridge, the Gebs or Hangazi section encompasses the development of various viaducts, tunnels, and bridges, navigating through diverse terrains and challenging landscapes. The construction process involves intricate seismic and wind design considerations, ensuring the bridge's resilience to natural forces and its longevity for generations to come. Bridging the Gap, Cable Installation Central to the design of suspension bridges are the cables that support the bridge deck, distributing the load and providing stability in the face of wind and traffic forces. The cables of the Izmet Bay Suspension Bridge are a feat of engineering, spanning vast distances with precision and strength. The construction of suspension bridge cables begins with the fabrication of individual strands, typically made of high-strength steel wire. These strands are then bundled together to form larger cables, with hundreds or even thousands of individual strands woven together to create a single cable. Once fabricated, the cables are hoisted into position using specialized equipment such as cranes or cable cars. Tensioning devices are then employed to stretch the cables to their specified tension levels, ensuring optimal performance under load.
overcoming challenges, seismic design and wind resistance. In addition to its sheer scale and complexity, the construction of the Izmit Bay Suspension Bridge presented engineers with unique challenges related to seismic design and wind resistance. Situated in a seismically active region, the bridge had to be designed to withstand the forces exerted by earthquakes, ensuring the safety of both the structure and its occupants. To address these challenges, engineers employed advanced seismic analysis techniques, incorporating features such as flexible bearings and dampers to dissipate seismic energy and minimize structural damage. Additionally, the bridge was subjected to rigorous wind tunnel testing to assess its aerodynamic performance and optimize its design for maximum stability in windy conditions. Orhangazi Izmir section. Stretching over 324 kilometers, the Orhangazi Izmir section represents the backbone of the motorway project, connecting regional towns, industrial zones, and urban centers along the route. This segment traverses through the heart of Turkey's economic landscape, passing through Bursa, Balakesar, and Manisa before culminating in the vibrant city of Izmir. The construction process for this section involves the collaboration of multiple contractors and consortiums, each tasked with delivering specific segments of the motorway. From the development of service areas to the implementation of toll collection centers, every aspect of the project is meticulously planned and executed to ensure seamless connectivity and optimal functionality. Key features and benefits. Izmit Bay Suspension Bridge. As the crown jewel of the motorway project, the Izmit Bay Suspension Bridge embodies the spirit of innovation and excellence. Its towering pillars and graceful curves stand as a testament to human ingenuity, while its robust design and rigorous testing ensure unparalleled safety standards. The bridge not only facilitates faster and more efficient transportation but also serves as a symbol of Turkey's commitment to infrastructure development. Enhanced Connectivity by shortening the distance between Gebs and Izmir by more than 140 kilometers, the motorway project significantly enhances connectivity between the Marmara and Aegean regions. This newfound connectivity fosters greater trade, tourism, and economic exchange, unlocking new opportunities for growth and development. Moreover, the motorway's strategic location and seamless integration into existing road networks ensure smooth freight and passenger transport further bolstering Turkey's position as a regional economic hub. Economic Impact The completion of the motorway project is expected to yield substantial economic benefits for Turkey and its citizens. With cost savings of $5 minus $600 million annually and the creation of 10 15,000 additional jobs across various sectors, the project promises to stimulate economic growth and prosperity. Moreover, the revenue generated from toll collection and associated services further augments the project's financial viability, ensuring long-term sustainability and continued investment in Turkey's infrastructure. Financing and challenges. 1. Public-private partnership, PPP, model. The motorway project follows a build-operate-transfer, BOT, model, 
leveraging the expertise of private investors and the support of the Turkish government. Through a combination of equity and debt finance, the project's financing structure ensures a balanced and sustainable approach to infrastructure development. Financial institutions such as Bank Intesa, Citibank, and Okbank play a crucial role in providing the necessary funding and support for the project's success. 2. Construction Challenges Despite its strategic importance, the motorway project faced numerous challenges during its construction phase. From navigating complex regulatory frameworks to securing financing in the aftermath of global economic crises, the project required innovative solutions and adaptive strategies to overcome hurdles. Phased construction models, strategic equity investments, and collaborative partnerships were instrumental in addressing these challenges and ensuring the project's timely completion. Monitoring and maintenance, ensuring long term viability. Beyond the construction phase, the long term viability of the Izmit Bay suspension bridge relies on meticulous monitoring and maintenance practices. Advanced structural health monitoring systems are employed to continuously monitor the bridge's condition, detecting any signs of deterioration or stress and allowing for timely intervention. Regular inspection and maintenance activities, including routine cleaning, painting, and structural repairs, are essential to preserving the integrity and functionality of the bridge over its operational lifespan. By implementing proactive maintenance strategies, engineers can ensure the bridge remains safe and reliable for generations to come. The Rock Retention Net Installation Project is an important endeavor aimed at enhancing the safety and security of the Pacific Coast Highway, SR1, by mitigating the risk of rockfall onto the highway. Located in an area known for its scenic beauty and breathtaking coastal views, the Pacific Coast Highway attracts countless tourists and travelers each year. However, the rugged terrain and steep slopes along the highway pose a potential danger as loose rocks can dislodge and fall onto the road, endangering motorists and pedestrians alike. To address this issue, the rock mitigation project is divided into two phases. The first phase involves a team of skilled rock climbers who will ascend the slopes overlooking the highway. Equipped with safety gear and specialized tools, these climbers meticulously inspect the hillside and remove any loose rocks that could potentially pose a threat. This initial step ensures that the immediate risk of rockfall is significantly reduced. In the second phase, a helicopter is employed to install rock netting on the hillside. The netting serves as a protective barrier, preventing rocks from detaching and rolling down onto the highway. The use of a helicopter allows for efficient installation, as it can maneuver in challenging terrain and reach areas that are difficult to access by other means. The netting is strategically positioned to cover vulnerable sections of the slope, providing an added layer of safety for motorists traveling along the Pacific Coast Highway. The installation of rock netting is a vital component of the overall rock mitigation strategy. It not only mitigates the immediate risk of rockfall, but also provides long-term protection against potential hazards. Regular monitoring and maintenance of the netting ensure its continued effectiveness in safeguarding the highway. Tyco implements a systematic approach to install retaining nets and spray concrete on cliffs to ensure effective slope stabilization and rockfall protection. 
The workers begins by manually drilling into the cliff face, strategically placing boreholes at predetermined intervals and depths. These boreholes serve as anchor points for the retaining nets, providing a secure attachment to the cliff. Once the boreholes are drilled, the workers proceeds to install the retaining nets. These nets are made steel cables which are strong, durable. Specialized equipment and techniques are employed to secure the nets to the boreholes, creating a reliable barrier that prevents rocks and debris from dislodging and falling. After the retaining nets are in place, workers proceeds with the application of shotcrete. The remote-controlled CIFA system is used to spray concrete or mortar onto the cliff face. Operators utilize the remote control feature to precisely control the spraying process, ensuring even coverage and adherence to the cliff's contours. Shotcrete serves as an additional layer of support, reinforcing the stability of the slope and providing protection against erosion and rockfall. In suburban Taiyuan, the capital of China's Shaanxi province, a remarkable technique known as soil spraying has been employed to transform barren mountains into lush green landscapes. This technique involves spraying a mixture of water, mulch, and seeds onto the surface of barren mountains to promote vegetation growth. The process is often carried out using aircraft or specialized machinery. The aim of this technique is to combat desertification and restore vegetation in areas where the natural ecosystem has been degraded. By spraying the soil with seeds and providing moisture, the technique helps to create favorable conditions for plant growth. Over time, the sprouted seeds establish themselves and contribute to the re-greening of the mountains, improving soil stability, preventing erosion, and enhancing biodiversity. China has been implementing this soil spraying technique in various regions, particularly in the northern parts of the country where desertification and land degradation have been significant challenges. This section shows how to manufacture tetra blocks, a type of concrete block which are commonly used in coastal engineering and are placed along shorelines, breakwaters, or cliffs to dissipate the energy of incoming waves. Before starting the manufacturing process, it is essential to clean the molds thoroughly. Any residue or debris from previous casts should be removed to ensure the quality of the tetra blocks. Once the molds are clean, they need to be set up for the casting process. The molds are made of metal and are designed in the shape of the tetra blocks. They consist of multiple parts that fit together to create the desired block shape. Once the concrete formula is prepared, it is poured into the molds. The concrete is carefully poured to ensure the molds are filled uniformly. Vibration is then applied to the molds to remove any air bubbles trapped within the concrete mixture. Vibration helps in achieving a dense and solid block structure. After the concrete has been cast and properly vibrated, it needs time to cure and harden. The molds are left undisturbed for a specific period, usually a day, to allow the concrete to gain sufficient strength. Once the curing time has elapsed, the molds are opened and the tetra blocks are carefully removed.
Using the excavator, carefully place the retaining wall units. Attach lifting straps or slings to the units and ensure they are properly secured. Position the excavator's lifting attachment for stability and control. Gradually lift the unit off the ground and position it over the designated spot. Lower it slowly, checking for level and alignment using a spirit level or laser level. Adjust the unit as necessary to achieve the desired alignment. Constructing a retaining wall plays a significant role in landslide prevention, particularly in areas prone to soil erosion or unstable slopes. Retaining walls are designed to resist the pressure exerted by soil or slopes. By building a retaining wall at the base or along the slope of a hill or embankment, it can effectively hold back and stabilize the soil, preventing potential landslides. The wall acts as a barrier, preventing the soil from sliding down the slope. Retaining walls are often constructed with reinforced concrete or other sturdy materials. The use of reinforcement, such as steel bars or geogrids, provides additional strength and stability to the wall. This reinforcement can help withstand the lateral pressure exerted by the soil and prevent slope failure, reducing the likelihood of landslides. The ACE tube, geotextile tube, dewatering system is an innovative solution for sediment dredging that effectively addresses the challenges associated with sediment deposition in rivers, channels, and reservoirs. Sediment deposition can have detrimental effects on water quality by increasing biochemical oxygen demand and consuming dissolved oxygen. The ACE tube dewatering system tackles these issues by utilizing geotextile tubes with excellent solids retention performance. These tubes efficiently separate and retain the sediment, allowing the water to pass through while retaining the solids within the tube. This process not only accelerates the dewatering of the sediment, but also enhances the overall efficiency of the dredging operation. Furthermore, once fully filled, the ACE tube can be easily transported for disposal or repurposed as a foundation for marine structures. This provides a sustainable and environmentally friendly approach to sediment management, minimizing the need for additional disposal sites and maximizing the utilization of dredged materials. To prevent erosion, various coastal structures are utilized, including breakwaters, groins, revetments, seawalls, and land reclamation. One effective erosion prevention measure is the use of deck fab geotextile tubes. These tubes serve multiple functions, such as acting as a core material, armoring, filtering layer, and scour protection. They can be customized in size and are available with high-strength woven or composite geotextiles. They allow water to flow through while retaining infill sand, they are cost-effective and time-efficient in construction, and they can be filled with locally available sand or dredge material using simple equipment and low-skilled workers. Additionally, geotextile tubes are environmentally friendly and can be incorporated into the environment as part of man-made dunes or riverbanks. Erosion control is a crucial aspect of land management and environmental protection. It involves implementing measures to prevent or minimize the loss of soil due to water or wind erosion. One effective solution for erosion control is the use of trap bags, a specially designed system that provides stability and reinforcement to vulnerable areas. Trap bags are flexible, geotextile containers made of durable materials such as polypropylene.
They are designed to be filled with sand or soil, creating a solid barrier against erosive forces. The bags are typically arranged in a linear or curved configuration, depending on the terrain and specific erosion control needs. The process of setting up erosion control with trap bags begins by selecting the desired location. Once the trap bags are in place, the filling process begins. Initially, the middle cells of the trap bags are filled halfway to create a stable base. Next, the second unit is connected to the first unit using wooden frames and screws, ensuring a secure connection. Afterwards, the remaining cells of the first unit are filled halfway, and then all the trap bags are completely filled. This filling process provides weight and stability to the bags, preventing them from shifting or being washed away during heavy rainfall or water flow. To further reinforce the system, a cover is pulled over the top of the trap bags and attached using hog rings or similar fasteners. This cover helps to protect the sand or soil within the bags and prevents it from spilling out or being carried away by wind or water. Additionally, a drain pipe is placed on top of the sand within the trap bags to facilitate proper drainage. This helps to prevent the buildup of water pressure, which can weaken the erosion control system. The use of trap bags for erosion control offers several advantages. They are cost-effective, easy to install, and highly flexible, allowing for adaptation to various terrains and project requirements. Furthermore, trap bags are environmentally friendly, as they can be filled with locally available materials and can be reused or recycled after their lifespan. The Macrete Flexi Arch Precast True Arch Bridge System represents a modern engineering marvel that combines efficiency, durability, and aesthetic appeal in the realm of bridge construction. Developed by Macrete Ireland, a leading precast concrete manufacturer, this innovative system offers a versatile solution for spanning various distances with elegance and structural integrity. At its core, the Flexi Arch system utilizes precast concrete segments to form a true arch bridge, which mimics the classic architectural form renowned for its strength and stability. However, what sets the Macrete Flexi Arch apart is its adaptability to different site conditions and requirements. The system is highly customizable, accommodating varying spans, geometries, and load capacities, making it suitable for a wide range of applications from pedestrian bridges to vehicular crossings. Precast True Arch Bridge Systems present several advantages and disadvantages compared to other bridge construction methods. True Arch Bridges distribute loads efficiently, providing excellent structural stability and resilience against various environmental factors, such as seismic activity and temperature fluctuations. The arch configuration inherently resists compressive forces, reducing the need for additional support structures and enhancing overall durability. The graceful curvature of true arch bridges adds a distinctive visual appeal to landscapes, enhancing the built environment and creating iconic landmarks. These bridges often serve as focal points in urban and rural settings, contributing to the cultural and historical identity of their surroundings. Precasting bridge components off site allows for quicker assembly on site reducing construction time and minimizing disruption to surrounding areas. This prefabrication process enhances efficiency by optimizing resources and labor, leading to faster project completion and cost savings. Manufacturing precast elements in a controlled environment enhances precision and consistency, leading to higher quality construction and improved durability. By adhering to strict manufacturing standards, precast true arch bridge systems ensure uniformity and reliability in their performance, 
minimizing the risk of defects or failures. Precast true arch bridge systems are highly customizable, accommodating varying spans, geometries, and load capacities, making them suitable for a wide range of applications from pedestrian bridges to vehicular crossings. This versatility allows engineers and architects to tailor bridge designs to specific project requirements while maintaining structural integrity and aesthetic appeal.